There we go. Oh, hey, it had to be meteorite hunting. <laughs> How's it going, guys? <laughs> going well, buddy. So one of the things I wanted to show off was actually my background today. It's a, a, a two kilogram um, campo. And as you can see, it's like not your average campo. Most campos are like shapeless blobs. This one's got reggies and all that other good stuff in it. Oh, beautiful. Well, that's, that's a beauty, too. <laughs> okay, Which one is that? This is Aguazarcas. This is a Holy free range. It's got, it's got mud, mud stains on it from where it fell. And beautifully um, oriented. Yes. Yep. Roll over lip all the wow. way around. Ooh, look at that. Yep. Blabbery oh, roll over lip. That's beautiful. Yeah. And What's this the, is... This, this is free range. This was the first. This was the first piece I bought um, on my first trip, and I was there on day four. I, I want to go back to uh, what Roberto was talking about with the uh, Campo del Cielo versus Campo Las Palmas. So this right here is a piece of Las Palmas. I, I picked this up oh, a couple of years ago. All right. So you can see this is a lot different than what you would normally see. Uh, as a Campo del Cielo, it's much, it's more, it looks African, it, yeah, it does, it does. So, it's it's got a lot of regular lifting on it, but it's also very twisted and it has some some resemblance to a, a, a Mundrabilla as well. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah, and so, this is a piece I picked, this is about 677 grams. Wow, yeah, this is my largest meteorite, but it's also, I think, one of my best. So that for a Kimbo, that has a huge amount of character. It does. That's why I got it. You're talking about storage. So what I do is um, I double store. So I got glass uh, containers with desiccant in them with a seal on it. Uh, and then that's all sitting inside of a larger Sterilite container uh, with more desiccant. And just like Pat has, you know, a, a cheap uh, a cheap sensor that, that tells me what the humidity is. So you can see I'm sitting at a 10% right now. Um and to be honest with you, I have a feeling that that's probably the low end of what the sensor will tell you. Beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah. a very wide rollover lip. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting. I saw it on eBay and I was like, oh, I got to grab that. And that's from Mirko uh, Grawl. That's fantastic. Um, talking about what's almost too much to take, let's check in with Doc Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Not a real doctor. Your mileage may vary. No uh, warranties expressed or implied. Uh, so, so Topher asked me to talk about books, and of course, books is my thing. This this first bookshelf here is mostly meteorite tech type stuff. Um, but the, the 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 meteorite books kind of fall into a few uh, common sort of themes. So the the first one is you know the people will find the most approachable. Uh, and really, really the the one to start with uh, for adults is is rocks from space. Oh, and no, it's one of my birthday meteorites. It's a 340 grams of uh, unclassified NWA. Um, wow. It is a fantastic meteorite. Great photography. It might yeah. be the last, the yeah. very last photo. Yeah, here, here we go, this one here. Yeah, so there's a couple of interesting things. There's a big megachondrule there that, that uh, Topher's on. And I'll bet that that is a barred olivine chondrule. Uh, there's a nice armored chondrule in the upper left. Mm -hmm. And then in the far lower right, mm -hmm. that thing exactly. kind of looks like a metal grain. That's not a metal grain. That is uh, FES. That's iron sulfide or troilite. And um, I had bought this desiccant. It's called Lot Fancy, but it's the food safe version and it's orange. And the orange beads actually turn almost clear or green. Um, yeah, it goes orange to green. Yeah. So, and I was about to go rip all the desiccant out of my cabinet. But this is some dust from the hoop collection or hoop. Hoop. Yeah. yeah. Adam Hoop. Um, yeah. Adam Hoop. Yep. So mm -hmm. I just got that because that's a nice little ad. I don't, I've never had lunar dust before, but from a lunar meteorite. So I thought that was neat to uh, 
add to the collection there. But nobody tells the stories as well as, as Harvey Neininger. So this is one of, one of the books, Find a Falling Star. This one was written in 72. So uh, the same author as Rocks from Space are the late, great o. Richard Norton and his friend Lawrence Chitwood wrote this book, Field Guide to Meteors and Meteorites. Uh, this is one of the very best uh, of the scientific books. Uh, I mean, if you look at this, it has beautiful areas. This dark tan area is consistent throughout to have really tight chondrules, like type three and four maybe. And, mm -hmm. and it's, it's everywhere that tan material is, you see chondrules. Mm -hmm. Whereas where this off greenish white is, it looks like, you know, like it has a texture almost like barred olivine or like looking like a, you know, human brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All the way down to the bottom and it weather strips on the bottom as well where it closes. Um, behind like a iron like this you'll find a, a hemp a hemp bag full of desiccant. Yeah. Each one has uh, like a pound in it or something like that. And it's nice you just hide it behind a big iron or you use it there as a display for your meteorite. With one of the things that I've learned is some stones you can take to a fine polish and we kind of talked about this um, off off the recording, but yeah. you can take to a really fine polish and they almost look like glass. Other stones, you want, you don't want to take that fine because you'll actually lose some of the definition of the little intricate color differences and, and it just kind of melds together and just looks like a dark glass. But there's a what I consider to be a not quite mm -hmm. so run of the mill uh, sericho slice. Mm -hmm. So it's got it's got decent green olivines in it. Nice. But what Very drew nice me to this part. slice was that big old run of chromite running right down the middle of it there. Wow. Um, so that's a combination of uh, iron oxides and, and chromium oxides in there uh, in the spinel family of, of minerals. Um, so you can see there, it's, it's kind of got an interesting shape to it. And it's kind of, I guess, I know, didn't play well with the olivines because there's no olivines sitting around it. <laughs> That's, uh, okay. Those are um, anti-corrosive emitters. So they emit anti-corrosive anti or, or corrosive inhibitors. Hmm. And they're good for like two years. So you put them up in a cabinet, you measure your square footage or your cubic footage. And you put, in my cabinet required two of them. Kind of the third leg of those, of the modern science books that, uh, uh, you know, approach the whole subject are, is Atlas of Meteorites. Um, Dr. Monica Grady and a couple of, of Italian folks. Dr. Monica Grady is the, the uh, curator emeritus at the um, British Museum of Natural History. And this one uh, dovetails very nicely with, uh, with those other two and the kind of the big science hmm. ones. It's my distinct pleasure on behalf of Mr. Daniel Shake when he announced it on the Hangout. I don't think people remembered it, but he announced that someone randomly will be drawn for a free meteorite classification uh, done by him for someone who donated. So oh, that's wonderful. I, I guess you learned about that, that, that uh, Daniel, uh, us trying to get together and, and help Daniel on one of the hangouts and it spurred you to action. Well, you are the winner and congratulations. Congrats, James. Very good. Right. Thank you. So I got to ask you, now that you're on the hot seat, you got a sexy rock that needs classification? <laughs> I do. I do. Oh, really? I have an NWA of one kilogram that uh, needs to be classified. So, Right on. I'll tell you what, um, feel free to reach out to Daniel Shake directly. Uh, he's on Facebook. There are some more specialized ones. Um, 
Don Tallarette and uh, Marvin Kilgore did this color uh, atlas of meteorites and thin sections. Wow. And it's, uh, it's mostly photographs and uh, some very nice um, uh, scientific discussion as well. So this is, uh, this is a, a piece that I also just got. It's a, uh, it's a Nuevo Mercurio. Nuevo Mercurio fell December 15th, 1978. Um, it, it's, a, it's an H5. It's really fresh. Um, and internally, it looks really different from wow. uh, Nuevo Mercurio. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty nicely uh, oriented. Yeah. Um, it's gorgeous. You know. Yeah. The negative pressure on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, look at the back. The backside's beautiful, and the backside has a bit more of a brown color to it too, as well as having the rollover lip all the way around the edge. Right. I can just watch this go all day, guys. Right. Nice was along with it. He sent uh, a nice little jar of uh, Canyon Diablo from inside the crater uh, sand collected before it was illegal to go down in the crater to do such things. Um, so I took a magnet to that the other day and it does, it's got a bunch of particles in there that attracted a magnet. So I want to fish those out and see if they're uh, high metal basalts or uh, if they're actual spheroids, which I got a couple uh, dangerous spheroids to compare them to. So looking mm -hmm. forward to, to seeing what comes out of there. Cool. This is probably my favorite book. Um, it inspired i read this and then like a week later aguazarcas fell and yeah. that's kind of reading um hag hag's account of going to hunt la criolla is kind of what like mm -hmm. made me say f it i'm just gonna hop on a plane and try my hand at it consolidated chemical mo molecular sieve 4a yeah wow. he said be sure to get 4a and because he was a chemist, I, uh, I did what he said, and I've never had any problem. That's fantastic. Yeah, good, good to know. I also yeah. just got um, this. It's, uh, it's, I'm not sure if it's an Acapulcoite or a Winonaite. It's NWA 725. So it's kind of like flip-flopped in classification. I've seen papers written on it. They call it a Winonaite. And then I've seen papers on it that call it, um, Metbull has it listed as an Acapulcoite. Nice. So this is a Damascus blade that was forged with Gibeon meteorite. Wow. Wow. Jesus, dude. Isn't that nice? Uh, I saw your Allende earlier. So I pulled mine out. It's not. Yes. It's, it's 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 a respectable size. It's like thirty nine grams. It'll do. Yeah. Wow! Sweet. Look at the great big uh, CAI there. There's oh, uh, yeah. Damian and I were just chatting online about CAIs and the. Um, I like. Uh, I I've been uh, collecting a lot of U.S. falls, U.S. witness falls, and this is really like it goes through every U.S. witness fall from. From the first one, Weston, um, all the way to Crescent, I think, in 2016. You know, a, a hammer stone is, is a meteorite that falls and hits a man-made object. So be it a road, a car, a house, uh, a mailbox. You know, they hit all sorts of things. A fence. Um, so those are, those are hammers. But uh, one of the things that I've been collecting are specifically ones that have hit cars, so I, I showed some of these off before. That's uh, St. Louis. That's uh, that hit a moving car uh, in, in <laughs> St. Louis. Uh, and again, there's not too much of that one around. And that was previously my oldest uh, car hitting hammer as 1950. Had a piece in that hit a car in, let me see if I can get it right, 1938. Any ideas? <laughs> 1938. So cars, cars weren't around all that long in 1938, right? Right. So this. Someone said Branhelm or something. Yeah, someone. Old. Yep. Yeah, oh, someone said that. Who, who guessed? 
That was me. Oh, Roberto. Nice, Roberto. Nice, Roberto. Yep. 19, uh, 1938, September 29th. This punched through Edward McCain's garage where he uh, habitually protected his car <laughs> so it wouldn't be exposed. <laughs> Oops. The irony. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, yeah, I think uh, Norton's Rocks from Space is probably the best book for a beginner. But yes. uh, if, if you're more, uh, if you're less interested in the science, but more interested in the history, uh, this book for beginners is excellent. Uh, hmm. The Science and History of Meteorites and Why We Should Learn to Love Them. This hmm. is the American edition. Uh, there's also a British edition by the same author with a different title. <laughs> exactly the same book, but it's got a different title. Hmm. Is that a Diagenite? No, this is an Albright. Oh, that's oh. the new NWA Albright. <laughs> yeah. Have, have you put a UV light to it yet? I keep asking, I, and nobody's done I it. Have, I have not, Pat. I still need to. Okay. I ordered a UV light, and uh, they stole it from my front porch. Oh, oh, was that was oh. oh. We need to say goodbye to everyone on, on YouTube. We're going to continue talking amongst ourselves without you guys watching us. Um, and just the, the video is getting too long. So we're going to end it now for everyone. See you guys. Hi, everyone. Thanks, all. Bye. Bye.